the next topic with you that is gravitation few terms what is gravitation gravity and acceleration due to gravity to begin with you should be aware of these three terms with you gravitation is about the force of attraction between any two objects in the universe so in the gravitation we are talking about the force which is causing attraction or force which is due to which there is attraction between the any two objects which are present in the universe like sun and earth it can be sun and mars or jupiter and earth any two objects like two students if they sit together they also exert force on each other so that force that is your gravitation but when we talk about gravity then the one body is replaced by the earth it means the force of attraction between the given body and the earth that is termed as gravity and acceleration due to gravity is the acceleration with which the body is falling towards the center of earth that is the acceleration of this because of the gravity it means the gravitational force all the time we are talking about gravitational force in the previous chapters also so when we are talking with the earth then we are using the word gravity when we are using uh, the force between any two objects in the universe then we are using the word gravitation so this is the difference between the these terms which we are very commonly using and of the galileo only who said that all the bodies they are attracted towards the earth with a constant acceleration and to that constant acceleration we are calling it as acceleration due to gravity though earlier uh, i can say about 2000 years ago there we were having the geocentric model geocentric model it means all the bodies they are attracted towards the earth and all the bodies are revolving around the earth but by now you all are very well aware of that the actual model with you is that is heliocentric model it means every object is revolving around the sun not the earth so earlier it was supposed that it was around the earth every object is revolving but that is not true so every object is revolving around the sun which was also mentioned by aryabhatta also in her in his theories so that uh, is just for your previous knowledge you should be having with you before we go in detail of the topic and of this after the galileo did all these studies the datas were compiled by kepler and he gave three laws which are known as kepler's laws and on the basis of that only newton gave you the universal law of gravitation but before going in detail of the universal law of gravitation i'm just uh, stating the kepler's law so kepler gave three laws which you all should be aware of what were those three laws which were the general observations which were taken by galileo and kepler of course was his assistant so he compiled all these uh, work and he gave the three laws on the basis of that and the first law which is given by kepler was that is law of orbits law of orbits says all planets move in the elliptical orbit around the sun situated at one of the focus of the ellipse you know when we talk about the ellipse we are having two focus here on the major line this is major line pa with u that is the major axis we call and this bc is termed as the minor axis these two axes are there it means the shape is little deviated of course Uh, earlier when we talk we talk about the circular motion but actual picture is not the circular motion rather the shape is ellipse and the sun is at one focus as shown in this diagram and 2a is the length of the major axis of the ellipse and 2b is the length of the minor axis of the ellipse so he said that all the planets they move in the elliptical orbit around the sun this was the first law and he talked about the fixed orbit so and that is why this law was termed as law of orbit 
second law with you is law of areas that says that if i am having the line which is joining any planet to the sun like here one planet is moving from p to p dash and the same planet if here it moves from this point to this i may name it as b b or any other name i can give i can give it as uh, q to q dash then what happens that the area which is they are taken uh, if it is moving from p to p dash or it is moving from q to q dash if the time interval is same then the area swept will be equal it means the planet any planet which is moving around the sun is covering equal areas in equal intervals of time and that is known as law of areas in brief if you wish you may write that da by dt it is equals to constant it means according to this law i can write da divided by dt it is equals to constant that is the law of areas with you which says that equal areas are swept in equal intervals of time which is if i am taking of any planet which is moving around the sun third law with you is the law of periods which says that the square of the time period like if a planet is moving around the sun then it is completing one complete path in a given time t that time is known as time period it means time taken to complete one revolution around the sun so that time period he said if i take square of that time period that is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis semi major axis means half of the major axis this pa is i termed it as twice of a twice of a is the length of the major axis and semi major axis means half of twice of a means it will be a so a is termed as semi major axis and if you wish of case you can here mark this is small a ma'am this is small a this i have marked it means this distance oa it is equals to small a that is your semi major axis studied the kepler's laws he said that when if i am having all the things they are moving in the circular path elliptical path is taken nearly to the circular path if i am moving around the sun a planet is moving around the sun then the force which is exerted that is of course the centripetal force so force will be equals to your mv square by r or you can find this mv square by r from here which is equals to the gravitational force this your centripetal force is pro giving you the centripetal force and from there he calculated this uh, all the things and then he said that ma t square according to third law that it is directly proportional to q and when he said put this value here r cube then you are getting that f it is coming proportional to your m and inversely proportional to r square so this was proved by taking the help of the uh, your kepler's laws uh, and then only he concluded newton's law of gravitation which you all are aware that is that force between two any two objects that is law of gravitation gravitation is uh, applicable for any two objects in this universe so this force is directly proportional to the product of these two masses m1 and m2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them that is f is inversely proportional to r square so when you combine these two equations you are getting f it is equals to g m1 m2 divided by r square and this g is here capital g that is the proportionality constant which is the gravitational constant and of course you should be aware that when i am taking this distance r between the two bodies that is always to be taken from the centers of the two objects 
So R is the distance between these two bodies. And of course force is a vector quantity. So I have to talk about the direction of the force also. Now when you study the, the of course in vector form we can deal but of course that is your common study. When you see that an object is falling towards the earth. So force on that body by the earth is towards the earth. It means away from that body. So force on the first body due to second body is towards the second body. Similarly, if you take force on the second body due to first body, that will be towards the first body. So this is F12 and F21. These are the forces. Of course, this force acts on a line joining these two particles M1 and M2. Once this law is clear, you can get some dimensional formula of this for the capital G, which is the gravitational constant. By knowing the dimensions of F, which is ML T minus 2, for distance it is L square, for mass it is M into M means M square. When you simply solve it, you are getting the dimensional formula for gravitational constant is m minus 1 l3 t minus 2 and you can write the SI units that so newton meter square per kilogram square is the SI unit for the gravitational constant and if you go with the detailed study this gravitational constant was found by Cavendish in his experiment uh, he did a uh, like number of experiments. He found this uh, the value of gravitational constant. G it is equals to 6.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram. This is the value for the capital G which is found experimentally by Cavendish. And he found that this value of G is not changing even on changing the physical conditions. So this was the value of capital G which you can use directly in the numericals. And of course if you want to go with the Newton's law of gravitation in vector form it means you should be writing the direction. As I have said if I am taking this is earth. This is earth if I am taking the center of the earth. Then this is if your body M, then the force on this body M due to earth will be towards earth. If I am calling it as M1, if I am calling it as M2, then this will be F12 will be always away from 1. So the same I have shown in this diagram also that when you take force on one body due to 2, it is F12. And if you want to write it in terms of the position vector, if I am joining it with the origin, I can get the position vectors. This is origin and the R1, R2 can be taken. Then of course I can find this value of R12. R12 is this from M1 to M2. This is R12. R12 and F12 they are in the same direction. But if you want to write because this force is an attractive force, attractive force is always negative sign written. So when you want to write with the negative sign, I have to write it as R21. If you want to write the value of R21, of course you can use the triangle law. When you are using the triangle law here, R1 and R12 are in the same direction and the resultant is equals to R2. So R1 plus R12 it is equals to R2. From there you can write R12 it is equals to R2 minus R1. Similarly if you want to write R21 it will be equals to R1 minus R2. So that if uh, the position vectors are given displacement vector can be calculated. If you are in two dimensions you can always prove that F12 it is equals to minus of F21. And of course this unit vector which is showing you the direction can be written in the form of the vector divided by its magnitude. So this you will be getting G M1 M2 R21 vector divided by R cube because this is also R square magnitude and here I am getting R as the magnitude. So I will be getting it as R cube. So for R12 and R21 
in the vector form the direction should be clear and of course if you, if you write f21 that you will be getting other way this side away from m2 and that will be negative of r12 so both these things you should be able to write the question which has come saying uh, saying the gravitational force characteristics that gravitational force between two bodies it is a central force central force means it acts along the line joining the centers of the two interacting bodies and of course it is independent of the intervening medium force it does not depend upon the presence of other bodies it means if i am taking any two bodies i will be simply considering the force between two, those two bodies only it is valid for point objects or i can take spherical symmetric objects which uh, whose mass we take to consider at its center and of course if you go with the magnitude of this force it is found to be very small we have so all this uh, characteristics you have to keep in mind so this for today thank you everyone